What does the success of providers like Netflix mean for the future of advertising dollars? Here to discuss is the host of the Big Picture here on RT America, Holland Cook, and conservative commentator Steve Malsberg, who combined have something like, I don't know, 100 years of broadcasting <laughs> business experience, you guys. He's uh, rounding up. I know, it's crazy. Uh, hey, uh, we love learning from you guys. Steve, first of all, give us some of the highlights from the uh, Q3 for Netflix. Uh, I saw their stock was trading about $350 today. Uh, tell us, tell us what happened. Yeah, well, you know, after a disappointing second quarter, they really rocked it. The street expected about 68 cents a share in earnings, and they were came in at 89. Uh, they are a 36 percent increase in revenue from streaming services, and the big news is subscribers. Uh, they went up uh, about seven million subscribers in the third quarter, uh, about a million point one here in the United States when they expected the, the people expected half of that, and the expectations for uh, global subscribers was about four. 4.4 million. They came in at about 6 million. And going forward, they say in the fourth quarter, they're going to add another 9 million, bringing the total to about 145 million subscribers. Look, people are cutting the TV cord, as we all know. And when that happens, OTT, like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon, they all benefit. So the future, uh, the present and the future, is looking good for Netflix. And uh, thank you. That's a great summary, Steve. And, and Holland, what exactly did Reed Hastings, uh, the CEO, have? to say about the television. I mean, I gave a little bit of it there, uh, change or fail, but, but give us a little more context. What the networks ought to do is news and sports, because they have a tough time covering all the other bets. And if you'll indulge me a dated reference, my fellow baby boomers will recall, uh, 1970s, ABC Sunday night movie, and they'd show you a Pink Panther movie that was a year old, and it was appointment television. Much of America wasn't even cabled yet. Back to the future, movies have been commoditized. Now series television is all over the place. And uh, there's a number that Steve did not include in what he just gave you, and the number is 57%. Netflix is now the biggest TV network in the world, and 57% so far is non-USA. So if you look at ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, and the basic cable channels, it's apples and oranges. They're competing for advertisers domestically, and Netflix is collecting monthly subscription fees globally. So it's a very tough competition for the uh, legacy networks. And, and Holland, I'll stick with you just real quickly. I mean, we've got, you guys have worked in this, you know, media that's uh, supported by advertisers. And I just, you know, this is just a sort of personal point of, of interest. How do you deal with things like you're doing this serious subject and you say, we'll be back, you know, with our discussion of, I don't know, you know, nuclear disarmament after a word from Skittles or something. I mean, how do you <laughs> yeah. deal with that? Yeah, a final dated <laughs> reference, I promise. Uh, that great Saturday night lineup on CBS uh, during the gas lines in the early 70s, the anchor show was all in the family. It broke TV ground. Everybody was watching it. And the New York City water system took a hit when they played the theme at the end because everybody went to the bathroom. So commercials do serve a purpose. It gives you a little breathing room. But again, in the era of that skip ahead button on the clicker, the commercial can easily be skipped. And Steve, uh, I, I, just briefly, I don't want to go too long, but do you have the same experience uh, with, with going to commercial in your days, uh, radio and TV? Yeah. You know, if you're lucky enough, I mean, to, to cover something big enough, like tragedies like TWA uh, that crashed in New York City or the death of Princess Diane, I was on the air for both. You know, commercials might be done away with. But yeah, you know, it, 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 you expect it as a host that you're going to have to go to a commercial break. So no matter what you're talking about, you try to segue into the commercial, make it interesting so that they'll come back. You know it's called a tease. And the listener or the viewer by now expects it as well, or at least did. I think Holland's right. Nowadays, you could just click uh, past those commercials. And, and Steve, sticking with you, uh, you know, everything's changed. The whole media landscape has changed. Give us, a, 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 to use Holland's show name, a big picture as to how advertising has changed globally in media. Well, I got to tell you, you know, um, as far as advertising, there are, you take the BBC in, in uh, the UK, uh, they don't use advertising, but that is a rarity. People pay for it through a, a licensing fee and a monthly bill on their telephone bill or something. Same in Japan and two-thirds of the European nations. That's how they fund public broadcasting. But 
advertising is going nuts. And you know who the biggest advertisers are, the, the biggest growth, the segment that's growing the most? Online companies, Netflix, Google, Amazon, Airbnb, you name it, Trivago. They are increasing by leaps and bounds in countries like uh, Australia and Canada and Germany and Czechoslovakia and the UK because they feel that it's the best way to get eyes on their product. So it, it's expanding and ad revenue from TV advertising is uh, increased over 36 percent in the last two years. It's 180 five billion dollar business so it's not slowing down it's gaining what well, thanks you so much guys it's uh, super informative as always and fun which is the most important part uh, Holland <laughs> Cook host of the big picture conservative TV and radio commentator Steve Malsberg thank you guys